large language models have made remarkable progress in complex reasoning tasks like competitive math and coding. Models such as OpenAI's O1 and O3 Mini have demonstrated impressive performance, but they are closed source and OpenAI has not shared enough details to enable the research community to replicate their training methods. This has sparked a wave of research to improve reasoning capabilities in LLMs, building up to the release of DeepSeq R1, which has democratized the idea of using large-scale reinforcement learning to enhance long chain of thought reasoning, where the model learns to devote substantial thinking time to solve a problem. However, some technical details behind DeepSeq R1 reinforcement learning training are unclear, making it difficult for the AI community to reproduce its results. In this video, we dive into a new research paper titled DAPO, an open source LLM reinforcement learning system at scale, which tackles key challenges the researchers faced when trying to reproduce DeepSeq R1 results. When the researchers first attempted to replicate DeepSeq R1 results, they encountered a significant performance gap. Their initial run only achieved 30 points on the AMI 2024 benchmark compared to the 47 points achieved by DeepSeq R1. In response, the paper introduces DAPO, short for Decoupled Clip and Dynamic Sampling Policy Optimization, a new reinforcement learning system that is built on GRPO. DAPO incorporates several novel techniques on top of GRPO, which we will review in this video. But before diving in, it's important to note that while the performance gap could be attributed to reinforcement learning process, another potential factor is the use of different datasets for training. The researchers created a new dataset, which may differ in structure or content from the dataset used by DeepSeq R1. However, the focus of the paper remains on improving the reinforcement learning algorithm and training process. Nevertheless, the findings are very interesting. The following figure from the paper shows that DAPO achieves 50 points on the AMI 2024 benchmark, which includes problems from a challenging high school math competition. This outperforms the DeepSeq R1 47 points using the same base model, but with only 50% of the training steps compared to DeepSeq R1. Along with the paper, ByteDance has also released their training dataset and code, making it possible for the community to replicate these results. Let's start by introducing DAPO. Now, since DAPO is similar to GRPO, let's look at the optimization objective for both GRPO and DAPO. But don't worry about the math, we'll spend a minute here, but in the following sections we'll explain the key insights from the paper in plain words, so you can follow along without a deep understanding of the formulas. To understand the intuition for the changes in DAPO, let's spend a minute about two concepts that are shared between GRPO and DAPO. First, Let's understand the meaning of the policy ratio noted with lowercase r. In our case, the policy is the LLM that we train. Given a question Q, both the numerator and the denominator represent the probability of a certain response by the LLM, noted with lowercase o. However, the numerator represents the new probability after the LLM has been updated in a certain training step, while the denominator represents the old probability before the LLM has been updated. This is just a number determined by the current state of the model, while the numerator are the parameters that we optimize in each training step. The ratio between them reflects the change in the LLM confidence for a specific response. In other words, how probable is the same response before and after a training step? If the ratio is close to 1, it means the new policy is just as confident as the old policy about the response. If the ratio is greater than 1, then the new policy is more confident about the response. If the ratio is less than 1, the new policy is less confident about the response. As an intuition, we want to update the model to prefer good responses. So if the response is great, we'll want it to be greater than 1. And if the response is poor, we'll want it to be lower than 1. Next, let's understand the advantage, noted with capital A. This is a measure for the quality of the response comparing to other responses. For each question, multiple responses are sampled, and a reward, noted with capital R, is calculated for each one, either by using a reward model or by using rule-based reward. The advantage of a response is measured by how high its reward comparing to other responses for the same question. If the advantage is positive, it means the response is better than the average response. Multiplying the policy ratio by a positive number encourages the model towards preferred responses, if the advantage is negative, the response is worse than the average. Multiplying the policy ratio by a negative number encourages the model away from poor responses. 
We'll continue to look at parts of the objectives as we talk about changes in Depo comparing to GRPO, but now let's review the first technique that Depo suggests called Clip Higher. To understand this, let's first cover the concept of clipping. Clipping is a common reinforcement learning technique that helps to stabilize the training process by preventing large updates to the model. We want each training step to make small, incremental improvements rather than drastic changes that could destabilize training. And clipping helps with that. Think that each training step is not exposed to the full training data, but rather just to a small batch of training samples. We don't want any single small batch to have a dramatic impact. Gradual improvements over time lead to a more stable training. In GRPO, the clipping factor is determined by epsilon in the objective, restricting the policy ratio to a trust region between 1 minus epsilon to 1 plus epsilon, where a common default value is 0.2. The researchers found that clipping causes entropy collapse. Entropy collapse is a phenomenon where the model becomes too confident about certain deterministic options. The lack of randomness can prevent the model from exploring different solutions. The underlying issue is that clipping favors responses with already high probability, which may limit exploration for low probability responses. If we limit the update size, then for a low probability token to become highly probable, the model needs to be updated several times. For a mathematical intuition, let's look again at the objective of GRPO. We see that we clip R, the policy ratio. As reviewed earlier, the policy ratio is defined with the existing response probability in the denominator and the new probability in the numerator. If a response has an existing low probability, then we divide by a lower number. So, updating the new probability to a value that passed the clipping boundary is more likely when the denominator is lower. Okay, so what DAPO is changing here? In GRPO, a single hyperparameter, epsilon, controls both the lower and upper clipping range. DAPO decouples them into two different hyperparameters and increases the upper clipping range from 0.2 to 0.28. This allows the model more freedom for exploration the researchers do not increase the lower clipping range to avoid decreasing probabilities of unlikely tokens to zero. In the following figure, we can see the impact of clip higher. On the left chart, the purple line shows that the accuracy of the model is improved when using clip higher comparing to the baseline which is using the default value. On the right chart, we see drop of entropy when not using clip higher. This is the entropy collapse phenomenon. We see that clip higher avoids this entropy drop. Let's now move on to the second change that DAPO applies called dynamic sampling. Let's start with understanding the problem that we try to solve with that. In both GRPO and DAPO, given a question, multiple responses are sampled. Each response is assigned with a reward. In rule-based reinforcement learning, the reward is often fixed. For example, one if the solution is correct, or negative one otherwise. So what happens if all sampled responses are correct? The reward is identical across all samples. And what does it do to the advantage? The advantage of each response is calculated relative to the other sampled responses. We see the advantage normalizes the reward by subtracting the average reward, causing the advantage to be zero in this case. Because if all rewards are equal, then the average is equal to the reward itself. This removes the training signal for such a sample. As training progress and the model gets stronger, this scenario becomes more common since the model solves more questions correctly across all sampled solutions. This means that effective batch size is reduced. Each training step is impacted only by the questions that are not consistently solved, which creates a smaller than intended effective batch. This reduces the training signals and can lead to larger variance. To address this, DAPO uses dynamic sampling. If all sample responses for a question are correct, we filter out the question and sample a new one instead until the batch is full with non-redundant questions. Going back to the objective, here is the part that represents dynamic sampling, requires that each sample is not consistently solved. Similarly, we also filter out consistently unsolved questions. Interestingly, the oversampling does not slow down training. The following figure shows that dynamic sampling achieves the same performance as without dynamic sampling, with only a third of the training steps. Let's move on to the third technique called token level loss. In reinforcement learning, the reward is calculated at the response level. We don't have immediate feedback for each token, such as in pre-training for example, where we train the model to predict the next token in a sequence. In other words, in reinforcement learning, there's no ground truth label for each token, only a reward for the entire response. 
However, since the model generates one token at a time, the loss needs to be propagated at the token level to guide the model's learning step by step. In GRPO, we can see we calculate a loss for each token in the response. This is the token level loss. Even without understanding what is written here, we see that it is being averaged by dividing by the response length, which makes it a sample level loss. Only after we average the sample level loss across all sampled responses, this effectively gives equal weight to each response, regardless of its length. However, sampled responses vary in their length. For high quality long responses, this slows down learning reasoning patterns from these responses, and poor quality long responses may not be penalized enough. Depo addresses this by averaging all the token level losses for all sample responses of the same input together. This is achieved with a small change to the GRPO objective function, moving the division by the response length to the end of the loss calculation, as we can see highlighted in red. The following figure shows how this change impacts training in purple. On the left, we see it prevents unhealthy increases in entropy, and on the right, we see a gradual increase in response length comparing to an unhealthy big jump at the start. Let's move on to the fourth technique that Depo introduces, called over long responses punishment. In reinforcement learning, a maximum response length is usually set and over long responses are truncated. When this happens, the reward for the response is negative since the model didn't reach the final answer. However, the reasoning process up to the truncation point may still be valid. This can confuse the model since it is being punished for high quality reasoning. To address this, the researchers explore two approaches. The first is called overlong filtering, which avoids updating the model based on truncated responses. The following figure shows the contribution of this approach. On the left, we see it helps to improve accuracy, and on the right, we see it improves training stability, avoiding a jump in entropy. The second approach is called soft overlong punishment, which extends the rule-based reward assigned to a response with another reward component. The new reward component is defined by the following equation, gradually signaling the model that the response is too long. The model is only punished when the response exceeds a certain length, starting with a small punishment and increasing as the response grows longer. Let's now see the impact of all of the techniques we covered by looking at an ablation study results from the paper presented in the following table. At the top we see DeepSeq R1 score of 47 points on Amy 2024. As mentioned at the beginning, the initial GRPO training achieved only 30 points, and the techniques we covered are gradually added, each contribute to improving DAPO score to 50, outperforming the 32 billion parameters version of DeepSeq R1. Another last change which we did not cover so far and is not listed here is the removal of the KL divergence from the objective. We see in the objective that GRPO has a KL divergence component which does not exist in the DAPO objective. This component helps to ensure that the model is not drifted too far away from the pre-trained model. However, the paper says that during reinforcement learning for long chain of thought reasoning, the model distribution can diverge significantly from the initial model and therefore this restriction is not needed. If you found this content valuable, please subscribe and hit the like button to support the channel. We also send one minute read summaries by mail about the papers we review here. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more reviews of AI papers.